All right, guys. So I want to talk to you about a little bit the theory or like the thinking behind how you should spend like your real gold. This is like I'm t I'm saying real. I mean like outside of laning. I mean, what's your first item? Is it glimmer cape? Glimmer cape four stuff. You you know what I mean? Like this first like fifteen hundred to two k gold item. Supports first item choices should be towards the cheaper, you know, end of the spectrum. If you're playing a position five, I there's not so many cases where you should be rushing like a pipe or a lotus orb, I think, or you know, maybe hex. You know what I mean? Generally speaking, you'll have less gold, so it's more value getting a smaller item such as veil, glimmer cape, four stuff. These items that are around two k gold. So first of all. It's important to know which items are actually strong in this patch. From my experience, or like from what I think, I think Veil and Solar are very good items simply because they have good build-up. Uh, the Medallion is a cheap item, it builds into Solar. Medallion is kind of a power spike, uh, provided you want to do physical damage. Your hero has some kind of buff or it makes sense with your course. Veil, same thing there. Bassy is a good item. Veil has a really strong power spike really early into the game provided you have magic damage, right? So what you need to be thinking about is there are a few questions you need to ask yourself when to decide what the, you should be buying. The first thing is what hero are you? Like, um, It's important to get this right. Most people understand this unconsciously, but it doesn't really, like they don't, they haven't re really made a rule about it. So let's say if you play, let's say Earthshaker, Blink Tiger enables your hero. Everybody knows this. This is why you don't rush mech on this hero. It's like, I'm just putting it on the, the argument on the edge to, to make a point, right? Uh, some heroes, they really need some kind of tool to help them play the game easier. So, for example, Omni Knight, which I may talked about a, a bit in the previous videos, is like, he relies a lot on positioning. He wants to be able to get his spells off and his ulti off. That's why I really like Blink Dagger on this hero. Sometimes I like Aetherlands on this hero. Because it's a lot about positioning. If you're able to cast your spells, it's always better than not being able to cast your spells. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. If your hero is more so like aggressive, hard to kill, like let's say Tusk or Ogre, like I think Medallion or Veil can be really good because you're able to get there. Like your positioning is less valuable because you're like this bully type of hero. You can you can be a bit more careless. You know, you're not your toolkit is not based around the right timing in a fight, if that makes sense. Like, if you time your Omni ulti right, it can be the difference making a fight. Like, Tusk or Ogre, don't, they don't have this sort of timing-based abilities. They just want to get their shit out as soon as possible. Uh, another question you need to ask yourself is, do we need, do we lack damage? Our team, like, do we actually need to, like, try to amplify our damage to, you know, win a fight or kill enemy cores? So this could be, like, Solar or Veil. It's like, it amplifies your damage, right? Other way around is, like, if you need to stay alive. So this could be, Thinking about your hero, your fellow support, or even your course. So, four staff, glimmer cape, uh, lotus orb, these items can help you uh, survive. So, if it's more about surviving, let's say you're playing as that Pango, a hero that when he uses ulti, he's very strong, but when his ulti is over, he's not so strong anymore. If you're able to survive the Pango ulti, based off having a four staff or a glimmer cape, now you're gonna be able to kill him quite easily afterwards, but you cannot really deal with him during the ulti. It makes sense. Uh, a lot of similar examples, uh, heroes that have BKB, you're playing as a Lycan, heroes that really need to kill you during a certain time frame. If you're able to survive this, chances are you're going to be able to beat them in a long fight. This is when you should be buying defensive items. Um, if you're playing as a Silencer, uh, for example, Lotus Orb is good. Uh, everything is going to be based on the draft and how the game is moving, basically. Uh, so it's hard to make a grand rule about this, but try to remember what items are good. Yeah, I cannot tell you like this is how you should always be buying. In fact, I would I would encourage you to never have like a a strict or set item build on any support. Part of what makes a good support hero is that you can be flexible with your build and you can be able to change the items. Obviously, a lot of the time there's gonna be some builds that are more optimal for certain heroes, uh, but sometimes it's good to be able to change this around. Okay, so as an example here, I'm playing Winter Wyvern against a Beastmaster Weaver Lone Druid TA. Uh, Winter Wyvern against a lineup that has no real punish for me. Uh, when I say punish for me, I mean they don't have like a Storm Spirit, they don't have a Spectre, they don't have a Night Stalker, something that can easily access the enemy backline, which means that I don't need to buy anything hyper defensive. I don't need to buy a Glimmer or an Aeon Disk, uh, these kind of, kind of items. All I need to focus on is being able to cast my spells. This is why I go for Blink and Aetherlands. 
if I am able to cast my spells in a good way, I will crush the fights, basically, right? I don't need to amp anybody, because if I'm able to cast my spells, it's like... It's more like timing-based. It falls in the category of like the Omni Knight I spoke about earlier. If I get a well-timed Cold Embrace or well-timed Ulti, this will change the fight more so than me sitting close to my core, being risk of dying and like spamming solo on him. So here I'm playing Treant against, um, you know, really heavy physical damage and uh, pretty low tower push. You know, so what I know about this game as Treant is that my ulti counters all of their heroes, right? Uh, root against Ember is great, Root against Seek Ulti is great, Root against Life Sealer after Rage is great. So, what I'll do this game is like, first of all, I'm buying a, a Holy Locket, which is a pretty good build up. It's like, I'm gonna make sure that my towers stay alive because they have no tower push. And then I'm gonna get a Blink Tiger. So that, in the case of, you know, they're using their abilities early, like Rage or something in a fight, I can turn the fight around. Like, my Wraith King. Theoretically, doesn't have a good matchup against Life Stealer or even Chaos Knight, and he can't really lock down Ember, right? But if I'm able to help him give the roots, like it doesn't matter how far the Life Stealer is because he cannot hit anybody, right? So this is why I go for the Blink over, like let's say, the Solar Crest because in a poor matchup, yes, it could help to have the Solar Crest for the the Wraith King, let's say. But if the matchup is so bad that uh, you know this might not make the difference, the difference has to actually come from me getting my spells off or like rooting this guy, you know, controlling him rather than uh, making my core stronger. Um, if I don't have a Blink Tiger, it's gonna be much harder to get the roots off in a good way. I might get punished trying to walk in by, you know, by the Ember Mirana Disruptor or something. So here's a Snapfire game. I, most of the time, I go solo on this hero, but because of my lineup here, you see like I have Anti Mage, Queen of Pain, Timber. It's like, it's, it's a game where we're gonna be, have, we're gonna have to dodge the enemies basically. We're playing a slow timing, I believe that Solar should be bought, you know, when you're trying to get involved early, like your carry wants to go Roshan early, hit a tier 2, you know, early in the sense of like, we're talking 20 to 30 minutes. Anti-Mage is a very slow hero, that's why I think the Solar is not the best, because we're not going to be fighting a lot with him. Instead, I'll go for items that helps us split push, uh, you know, something more aligned with the game plan. So I'll go for Glimmer Cape, which helps me or my core stay alive later on in the game. Blink Dagger combined with the Shard on Snapfire is a pick of item, and then I'll get Lotus. It's it's all about being able to cast the spells, play on map, and surviving. So, you see, this is more aligned with the game plan here. If, let's say, I was playing with a Wraith King that really wants to fight, he wants to get involved early, he's gonna buy a fast Blink Dagger, I would definitely go for a Solar Crest, buff him, and, you know, make sure that we're strong at this timing. But it's all about understanding the timings of your course and the game plan of the game. Uh, and build accordingly. Uh, I hope that cleared some things up for you guys. It's Your item decisions should be based on your hero, but also the entire draft, both both teams' heroes, how the game is going. Um, it should decide uh, what type of items you buy.